Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about the Block software pattern. Block is a software pattern that was developed by Google and the basic idea is to create what is called a business logic component which uses just streams for your business logic. A lot of the concepts that come with the block pattern we've sort of talked about and touched on in other tutorials but we've never really talked about them all at once. I would say that the closest we ever got to building a block based application was with the weather application that we built using Rx command. All right, so let's get started. We've got two stateless widgets here. One of them builds out our material app and then the other one builds out a empty scaffold. The application that we're going to be building today will be a stripped down version of the movie searcher application that we built in one of the other projects. Now the reason why I chose to revisit this application is mainly because the API allows us to search and query for particular movies. In this way we can see how we can send streams to our block and then use those streams inside of the block to query an API. Just an FYI as we're doing this I do have the API key for the API that we're going to be using and it's in a separate file here that's why I'm importing it like this. So we need to create our model I'm going to call this model movie and we're going to bring in dart async dart convert as well as the package for HTTP and we'll alias this package as HTTP. Now we're bringing in these packages mainly for the API class which we're also going to build inside of this file. Our movie class model will contain three final strings. We'll have a title, a poster path, and an overview. And we want to pass these strings to the movie constructor. So this title, this poster path, and then this overview. Then to parse the actual JSON request, we'll make a simple named constructor called from JSON. This takes in the map that we get from our JSON decoder and then it takes the keys out and puts them into our string variables. So the key title will go into title, poster path will go into poster path, and overview will go into overview. For a little bit of reference, here's what one of the JSON objects will look like. So I've queried for the, so I've queried with the letter A, so this gives us all of the movies that start with the letter A or that have the letter A inside of them. And you can see that the JSON starts with a page, total results, total pages, and then it has this results list which has all the objects that we want inside of it. And inside of each of these objects we have a lot of different fields. The ones we're going to focus on are the title, poster path, and the overview which is a block of text. Now that we have our model defined we can define the API class that we want to use to actually query this API. So in here we'll instantiate a final HTTP client which we'll call underscore client and then we'll create a static constant string which will be our URL and you can see here it's just the URL for the API and then we take our API which we're getting from this API.dart file put it in here using string interpolation and then after query I've got this little string that's just a open bracket one and then a closed bracket and we'll use a function to replace this piece of string with the query that the user is typing in. The main function inside of this API will be called get. It will take in our query which will be a string and then it will output a future list of movie type. This of course will be asynchronous. We want to start off this function by creating an empty list of movies and we'll just call this variable list. Then we'll await client.get and inside of this get request we'll parse our URL with URI.parse. We put in URL and we want to replace this little piece of string with our query so we just use replace first. We can then chain on this method and grab the response and then strip out the response body. After we take out the response body we want to call the JSON decode function on the result of that. Then we'll take the JSON itself and grab everything that's inside of the results key. Now you remember that the results key gave us a list of the movie JSON objects. So by doing this we just get that piece of the JSON request. Then we can take this list of JSON objects 
and then iterate over all of the different objects by using the for each method. And we want to take the movie, run it through our movie from JSON constructor, and then add it to our list of movies, which we have up here. So this will then take all of the JSON structures, convert them to movie dart objects, and then we can return them from this function. So we just want to return our list. Now that we have our model and API built, let's build out the actual business logic component or block. For this block, we're going to bring in Dart Asynchronous, and then we're also going to bring in our model, which is just block example backslash model.dart. We're also going to use rxdart inside of our block. So I'm going to import it into the pubspec YAML file. And the latest version of rxdart is 0.16.7. So that's the version that I will be using. Back in our block file, we can just import rxdart. And now we can create our block class. We'll just call this class movie block. Inside of this class, we'll define a global variable, which will be our API. So final API, API. Then we want to define the streams that we're going to be using inside of this block. So these are two streams that are going to be originating from the block and being passed into our application. So we have a stream which has a list of movie inside of it. And we'll call this underscore results. We want to set it to an empty stream. And then we'll also have a stream of string, which we'll call log which we'll use to log the queries and stuff inside of our application. And we also want to set our log to a, an empty stream. So we have the two streams that we're going to be emitting from the block. Now we want to create this stream that we want to bring into the block. And this will be this query stream. Now this is of type replay subject. The replay subject is a type that comes from rxdart and it allows us to emit the observer of all items that were emitted from the source regardless of when we subscribe to it. So what this allows us to do is delay when we want to emit the query to our function. So the user is actually going to be typing into a text box and we'll be able to say, okay, well, we don't need the information until a specific time after that. If we weren't using rxdart, all we'd have to do is replace our replay subject with a stream controller with a string inside of it. And we would just get roughly the same type of behavior in this case as well. All right, so now that we have our three streams defined, we need to create getter methods that will allow us to fetch these streams from outside of the block. So for the first two streams, it's fairly straightforward. We just say stream string get log and point it towards log. And then for results, we're just taking a stream of list movie and we're getting it from our results stream. And then for the query, we're using what's called a sync. The sync is like the stream's destination. So it allows us to get the end of the stream where the data is going. So in this case, we can grab the very front of our query stream by saying, okay, well, we want the sync of this stream. All right, so now we've defined all of these streams. Let's create the constructor for our movie block, which will allow us to actually define how these streams will interact with one another. So here we have our constructor. It takes in our API. We're going to take our results stream and we're going to set it equal to query dot distinct. Distinct allows us to specify that we only want the events from the stream that are distinct, meaning if there are multiple events that are exactly the same, we will throw them out. So for instance, when the user is typing into the text box, if they stop typing, then we'll have the same event over and over and over again. And because we don't want to continually ping to the API, we can make sure to throw out those events this way. We can then map our observable to our API get function through this async map function. This is sort of like the map function that we were using before where we can map a function to a list of values. But in this case, we're able to map it to our observable or our stream rather than just a normal list of values. And we need to do it asynchronously. And that's why we're doing it with this async map. 
Then finally, because we want this stream to be a broadcast stream, we're going to cast it as a broadcast stream. Now, a broadcast stream is a stream that allows for multiple subscribers, and that's the behavior that we want in this case. Now let's set up our log observable. So we just instantiate a new observable around our results stream. Then we want to get the latest piece of data from our results observable. And what we're going to do is call this little anonymous function on our query.stream. So we'll take the string that the user is typing into the text box, pass it to this little anonymous function, and then put it into this string. So every single time the user types in a character, it will then print out results for, and then the actual query that's being typed out. And then for this stream, we also want it to be a broadcast stream. So we'll cast it as a broadcast stream. Now finally, to finish off our block, we want to create a small dispose function, and we'll use it so that we can dispose the query stream. We want to do this because streams in Dart do not naturally dispose themselves. And if we just leave them open, it could potentially cause performance problems. So in this case, we'll be able to dispose of the stream when we're finished with it. We do not need to dispose of the other two streams because remember, they're originating from our block rather than coming into our block, whereas our query is coming from the UI and then going into our block. All right, so now that we have our block and our model set up, as well as our API, we can set up the inherited widget that we're going to use to serve the block to our application. And we'll call this the provider. The class itself will be called movie provider, and we'll have it extend an inherited widget. As a quick tip for you guys, if you have a class that extends another class and you're inside of Visual Studio Code, you can click on the class name here and you'll see a little light bulb show up. You can click on it and you can say create missing overrides and this will create the functions that you need to override to actually implement the class that you're creating. So in this case, we only need to override the update should notify function and we want this function to always be true. So we'll just make it a single line function and we'll just have it return true at all times. We also want to make a global movie block inside of this class. So we'll put it at the top of this inherited widget. Then finally, we want to create a static method called of, which takes in the build context and outputs our movie block. This will allow us to easily gain access to the movie block anywhere in our application. And inside of it, we just call context inherit from widget of exact type. And we're passing in our movie provider and we need to cast this as a movie provider. And then we're just going to get the actual movie block. Finally, let's make the constructor for this widget. And what we'll do is we'll make it so that we have an optional key, our optional movie block, and then the actual widget, which will be the child of this widget. We'll take our movie block and we'll set it up with the movie block that's inside of this inherited widget. If that's null, however, we'll instantiate a new one with an API inside of it. And then we'll take our child and key and pass it to the super constructor. So now we can come into our main application and now bring in our provider, our model, and our block and we'll be able to actually set up our user interface and have our application work properly. Here's another quick tip with Visual Studio Code while I'm at it. If you click on a widget and you want to wrap that widget in another widget, you can click the light bulb here, and then you can click wrap in new widget, and this will automatically generate the code that you need to wrap the widget. So in this case, we're wrapping our material application widget in a new widget, and this new widget will be our movie provider widget. If we want to, we can add the movie block and movie block API instantiation to the movie provider. But of course, because we set up in the constructor that we do not need it, this is not necessary. So now we have our movie provider around our entire application's widget tree, which means that we can now access our streams from anywhere in the application. We can get the movie block by calling movie provider dot of context. And then we can build out our scaffold a bit. So we create our app bar and then the body will be a column. Inside of the column, we'll have a container. We'll give it some padding. And then inside of it, we'll give it a text field. And then for the on changed property, we can call movie block, grab our query stream, and then call add on it, which will add the text fields data into our sync inside of our movie block. 
We'll also give this text field a little bit of decoration. We'll just make it an outline input border, and then we'll give it some hint text which says search for a movie. After our container with our text field, we'll create a stream builder, and this stream builder will be responsible for the movie block dot log stream. We take this string that we're getting back from the log stream, we're going to pass it through the snapshot, and then we'll create a container and we'll put a text widget inside of this container, which will reference the data. And if the data is null, then we'll pass back an empty string. Now we can create another stream builder. This time we'll put it inside of a flexible widget because we're going to have a list view inside of this. And this stream builder will be responsible for the results that we get back from our query. So this will be all the movies that we have, so the list of movies, and we'll have them stored inside of this asynchronous snapshot here. If our snapshot does not have any data, we'll return a center with a circular progress indicator inside of it so that we just see it loading until we actually get the data. Otherwise, we'll return a list view builder widget. Inside of our builder, we'll define our item count, which will be our snapshot data length, and then the item builder, which will build out a list tile for each of the movies. Then for each of our movies, we'll set it up so that the leading item is a circle avatar with an image network inside of it, which takes our poster path and amends it onto this little URL. So we just grab snapshot data index poster path. And then the title field for our list tile will be the snapshot data index title. So this will be the title text. And then our subtitle will be our overview. So snapshot data index overview. And these two will be inside of text widgets. All right, so that's all we needed to build for this application. So let's actually compile it and see what it looks like. So here's our application. You can see we have our search box and then down here we have this circular progress bar just spinning around. If we click into the search box and type in a letter, it should automatically go and query for us various different movies. And it gives us the movie titles as well as the movie overviews. And if we keep typing, it will keep giving us different movies until it finds nothing. So you can see that this is a pretty responsive way of doing things. As we type into the box, we get our items back in a fairly quick manner and it allows us to easily augment things. Even when we delete a character, it will automatically go and query the API, which is pretty nice. And as mentioned before, we're using two stateless widgets. So nowhere inside of our application do we have to call set state. It will just automatically update the appropriate widgets that we need to update when the state changes inside one of the streams. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, then by all means, downvote it as much as you like. Have a good night.